Good morning, you guys. Today we're gonna do some school bus training with the right turns here. I wanna show you a tight right turn. It's normally a car on the corner here and it's tight. We'll see how that works out today. So of course we stop back here on the red, especially in commercial vehicles because other commercial vehicles won't be able to turn. So I'm gonna take this tight turn. I know it's not so tight today, but it's a right turn. You begin turning at the curb line there and you watching all your mirrors and you don't cross over that yellow line there. Pay close attention to the parked cars in the front and the back on that right traffic there. Now you can approach the yellow line. Don't be afraid to cross it if you have to. If you have the space, use it if no one's there. I suggest in a tight city area. So we're just gonna continue down here. I gotta cross over a little bit. This will make it easier for myself. It's not legal, you're not gonna pass your CDL test crossing this yellow line. You gotta do what you gotta do out here on the road to get these kids to school safe. I just like to open up my space between me and the mirrors of the parked cars. So I just approach the yellow line just a little bit. Sometimes I cross it, I'm not gonna lie to you, but I only cross it when there's no oncoming traffic and it's safe to do so. And I also use my turn signal when I'm crossing over that yellow line in case oncoming traffic is coming that I don't see and any traffic behind me can know what I'm doing. See, you stay within the line when you have the space. It's not that difficult. At this point, I'm going straight. It's like driving a huge car. Both hands on the wheels. Ten and two. At all times to a smooth, gradual, complete stop. I'm gonna make a left turn up here on this second light. It shouldn't take too much longer. So you guys can see the left turn approach. Now with the left turn, you don't turn at the curve line like you do on the right turn, you gotta obviously pull out into your lane. So you go out into your lane and then you begin your turn as you so. So I got the curve over there and I got the yellow over here and I come right down the center because I went out into my lane before I begin turning. So that was the left turn approach. Look at this. So now we're going down a, a tight area here back in the city. And again, I just, I use my turn signal if I have to approach the line. So everyone knows in the front and behind what's going on. We got some situation right here. So we just want to take our time, slow it down. You can always stop before you hit something. Slow it down, slide right through there, okay? Now, hey, you just want to be focused. Center yourself as much as possible. Don't do too many maneuvers to move out of people's way. Just come to a stop and approach the optical slowly and adjust your way through. If you think you're going to hit something, just stop. There's no way you should drive the school bus it's too fast that you can't stop before you hit something. That's just insane. So we, I just continue to approach each light adjusted and well in the center as I can. And don't forget the coast and cover when you 
coming across intersections, uncontrolled intersections mostly, but any intersection, seriously. You can't forget the coast and cover. Coast and cover is placing your foot over the brake, but not touching the brake. So it's cutting down the reaction time. Where if you need to hit the brake, your foot is already there. You're covering it while you're coasting through the intersection. That's why they call it coast and cover. It's another tight area on this street here. So I'm just gonna see if I can get there real quick and wrap this video up. So we covered the right turns. You turn when the nose of your bus hit the curb line, adjusting yourself around the corner with the traffic mirrors. You can also use your student crossing there to see what you're facing in front of you. Traffic mirror to see what's behind you. And don't be afraid to use your student mirror to check your danger zone as well. Very important. Danger zones are very dangerous in the city. Okay, now we are approaching another tight area here. You can notice how tight the cars are. They start to park up on the sidewalk. It gets that tight up here. Okay, so I'm just approaching. This, this next red light, adjusting as much as I can. I have to go over this line because this truck right here is not leaving me any space. And I just love to keep my space in between me and the mirrors. That's my danger zone, 10 feet on each side, 10 feet in the front, 10 to 200 feet in the rear. And that's very important to me as I drive through the city because that's when people of traffic and pedestrians Pets. We got some people that want to cross. It's always best to stop for the pedestrians. Put your four-way flashes on, let them go through. This is the tight area I was concerned about here, guys. So notice all the parked cars on each side, the oncoming traffic, and I'm just going through. I came to a stop, let my pedestrians go through here. And I just get through this tight block before I end this video here. We got another CDL driver up here on the right, transit. So I'm just gonna go over this yellow line as I need to. That's my homeboy. Yo! You gotta holler at me, man. This is where you at? Yeah. You say you gave it, so what happened to the post office? I gave that up too, man. Got my own tr training business now. The number's still the same? Yeah, my number's still the same. I got a contract with them. Since I wasn't doing it, they took it from me. Yeah, hit me up. I'll get, I get it back for you. All right, we'll talk. All right. All right that was the uh, transit driver there. I know a lot of drivers around here. I trained over. 200 drivers. I think I'm working on 215 and 216 a day. I'm on my way to the training area now. I trained him years ago for his passenger and school bus endorsement. But like you said, if you don't use it, you lose it. So he'll be giving me a call to get that back. And that's what I do. Right now, we're just going through a uh, road course. I was going to stop the video after I got to that tight block, but it kind of threw me off, so I'm just going to let it go and rock out. So now we in the suburbs. I'm able to stay within my lines and do the speed limit, which I wasn't able to do in the city. The speed limit in the city is 25, residential area for commercial vehicles, but you're not going to be able to do 25 through those tight areas. And this is some tighter areas. This is just moderate tight that I showed you here today. I can show you some super tight, extreme tight on the next video or on another video. So I'm just trying to keep my speed as I'm going down the hill. This bus weighs 29,800 pounds. So going on a decline 
it, it picks up speed pretty quick and it becomes harder to stop. For every 10 miles an hour, I need a second to stop this vehicle as I go up to 45, 40 miles an hour. So that's four seconds, four and a half seconds to 45. Plus I, had a, I have to add a second on to for the weather. And you got, don't forget the, the decline, the inclines and stuff you have to add time on for, for the break-in. These seconds. So it's all about a space cushion and keeping a distance. What's in between, in between you and the vehicle in front of you. You can't control what the car is behind you. But you can keep an eye on that damn car. So you see, I'm just going up. My speed limit here is 40. I'm only going 35. So we approach it. The underpass here. Very important for the CDL drivers to pay attention to these clearances. The clearance for this underpass is 13 feet 8 inches. Me personally, I don't go underneath nothing smaller than 12 feet 6 inches. So 13 8 is perfect for me. It gets a little scary. Seems like it's not going to work out, but it fits just fine right there. It's like a little dip. Coming back up the hill here. because it's a federal law, it's a federal offense, I should say. If you have your master flasher on when you stop at the railroad and open your door and take a look, because your stop sign's gonna come out, now you're directing traffic to stop on the railroad. And that's against the law, and that's dangerous. Not just against the law, it's dangerous putting people at lives at risk. So you want to be very careful with the railroad. So you as soon as, as soon as I see the railroad sign, I continue, I started. 200 feet before my railroad crossing, I turn on my four-way flashers. 50, the 15 feet, or at the stop line, I come to a complete stop. You got a part in this railroad, it has a red, uh, red light, I never, counter one of these before. I come to a complete stop, put my bus in neutral, apply my parking brake, open my service door, I look up and down the track, making sure there's no train coming either way and I got enough space to get complete across. I put my bus in drive, release my parking brake, close my door, accelerate rapidly across the train track. If the gate comes down, I'm just gonna go through it and radio dispatch. I never ever stop on the railroad tracks. Once I'm completely across, I turn off my four-way flash. 